Okay, so um, how many people have heard of a graph database before or know what it is? Okay, about, about a third, all right. So for you, the first bit will be a bit, bit slow, but then you'll be like, hey, I know all that stuff. Uh, so for the rest of you, um, so this is what we're going to do. Uh, so we're gonna, we're, we'll go for about, I think we're going to go for about 40 minutes. Um, this is kind of the rough structure, so you'll know where we are. Uh, so we're going to have a look. We'll have a little bit of an overview of what is a graph database in the first place, um, since some of you have not come across it before. I uh, will have a look. What would you? What, what's the whole? What's the point of this thing? Why would I use it to, to begin with? Uh, and then we'll have a look. Uh, I guess typically, as you do with most databases, you're like, okay, well, you've shown me this new thing. How do I? How would I model my data in it typically, and how would I query it? Uh, and then we'll have a look at what what stuff people are using it for, and we'll we'll go through one of the the demos for for a bit. Uh, so it should be fun. Uh, okay. So quick uh, introduction. So how do we even get to the point where a graph database was a thing? Uh, so I guess maybe for most of you, certainly for me, the first. Uh, six or seven years when I was working, um, there was no choice when you, when you had to come and uh, put, some, put your, your website, uh, you had a database at the back end, and you're like, okay, where am I going to put the data? It was pretty much a relational database, and you just had to choose, well, which one is it going to be? Uh, we kind of got to the point, I guess probably 2000, maybe 2006, 2007, around there, and people were like, oh, this relational thing was cool, but there's some problems where, where it's not working so well. Uh, and the early running in the, in the NoSQL space was kind of focusing on the left-hand side of this crossroads, if you like. Uh, and so it was looking at how do we uh, aggregate the data. So instead of having to do these joins, so the joins were the problem. It's like, hey, we've got all this data, and we're doing a join of this table to this one to this one to this one. Uh, and it takes a really long time uh, as, the data, uh, as the amount of data that we've got increases. Uh, so we wanted to solve that problem. Uh, and obviously, one way to do it is to denormalize the data. So we just go, OK, well, what I actually want at the end is this big document of stuff. So that's what I'm going to store. Uh, so, so that's the, the key value or, or document sort of side. Uh, Neo actually sits on the other side. So this is where you say, well, actually, I want to keep the structure, and I'm actually going to make it even more um, fine-grained. So, uh, and we'll, we'll go into what that means. So I want to make the, the model richer. So rather than uh, doing the joins at query time, I actually want to do the joins at write time. So I've effectively got like a pre-computed join stored between all the records um, that I want to uh, query. Uh, and here, so this is where we're going to sit. So we're going to go on this side of the, uh, of the diagram uh, for today. Uh, so here's the diagram. So I guess you, might, you probably may have come across most of these categories before. So uh, this is from Martin Fowler's NoSQL Distilled book. Uh, and so he was looking, he was trying, uh, I think it was probably four or five years ago, having a look across the space and trying to say, if you were a complete newcomer to NoSQL databases, what, 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 can you, what are you actually going to find when you go uh, exploring? Uh, and he suggested there's uh, four categories. So you've got key value, column family, document, uh, and graph. So those were his, those were his four categories. Um, and if you were to put uh, some names that you probably come across in here, uh, React would sit up here, Aerospike probably up here as well, Redis. Um, I guess um, in the middle you'd have Cassandra. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, Mongo, Couch. I think RavenDB is a popular .NET one on that side. Uh, and then down here, this is where we're going to live. Um, uh, so with Neo4j, there's a couple of other ones, but at the moment Neo4j is the most used um, graph database. Uh, and so as you can see on these names, these ones are, are, are doing some sort of denormalization to the data as compared to relational database. Uh, and Neo4j is actually keeping the normalized structure and perhaps making it even more normalized uh, than you would have it in a relational database. So that's the, that's the contrast uh, of what it does compared to other stuff. Uh, so the first thing, uh, so, so we're going to be talking about graphs. So that's our, that's our main word. If you type that into Google, you end up with a very different uh, thing than this talk is about. Uh, and so I, I do, I've uh, been doing quite a lot, or, or was doing quite a lot of uh, customer <laughs> technical facing work. And every now and then, you come across someone who was like, I don't get this graph database. I put my data in, and I don't see any visualizations. And they're expecting some, some charts. And so it's a very misleading experience if that's what you expect. So that's the, those are very different graphs. But that's what Google uh, reckons is a graph. Um, but those are definitely not the ones we're going to talk about. So we get uh, our uh, C uh, chief scientist will slap you around the head, well, metaphorically. And uh, these are charts, uh, apparently. But everybody else in the world calls them graphs. So there you go. Uh, so actually, the graphs that we're, that, we're, that we're wanting for this session are actually more like this. Uh, so it's where we've got uh, so kind of bits of data. Uh, these are the circles, uh, and they're connected in some way. And you can describe what that way is. So this is a, a, D3, a D3 visualization of a graph. And there's lots of different, uh, different graph visualizations you can steal from the D3 website if, if that's the th thing you want to do. Uh, 
Um, but the main thing from this slide is that we've got two bits of uh, two, uh, two, two keywords that, are, that you need to understand for the, for the rest of the talk. Um, so, this, so a node uh, are the bits of data that you here. Those are equivalent to the records uh, in a relational database. Uh, and then we've got relationships, which are the lines between them. And those are, the, they're actually the join, right? not the foreign key and primary, or not the foreign key, uh, primary key combination. It's actually when the joins already happened. So it kind of moves forward the join to write time instead of at read time. So that's, one, that's, the, that's the main difference. Um, so graph databases are quite new. So they're sort of, uh, I guess, the last. Uh, so Neo became a company in 2007, and they were built, the founders split it out from a, from a CRM system they were building uh, in 2002, I think. So they've been, do, they've been doing it for a while. Um, I guess it's, it's starting to become uh, a little bit more um, mainstream uh, awareness-wise in the last couple of years. Uh, but the idea of, of graphs in general is not a very uh, new thing. It's quite an old thing. In fact, it probably, uh, when you saw that other diagram, that might have taken you back to uh, secondary school maths. Uh, at least that's what, that's what it does for me when I think of uh, graph theory. Uh, so, so graph theory was invented in the 1800s by this guy, so Leonard Euler. Um, and he was trying to solve, oh, it's a much simpler problem that, um, uh, with data than we do today. Uh, but all, what he had to do was work out how is it possible. So it was in Konigsberg here. This is, the, this is like a part of the, part of the city. Uh, and he wanted to work out how do I get, so these are the bridges. Uh, so the bridges are in red. And the bits of land are, in, are circled and, and lettered. And he had to figure out, is it possible to get between all the pieces of land without going back on the same bridge twice? So that was the, the problem. Um, and originally, people were, were kind of looking at, oh, do I need to take into account all the detail of the bits of land or the size of the bits of land? Uh, and he worked out, actually, it's completely irrelevant. All you need to know is uh, there are some things, and they are connected together. Uh, and in, in this case, he actually worked out it's not possible uh, to do that without going back. Uh, and it was actually reasonably simple. It was because there were you need an even number of bridges uh, for that problem. Uh, but this is the idea. So he's, he's, he's created the first graph, uh, if you like, or the, the graph that we're talking about, at least. And so he's got bits of land, and the relationships are, uh, can, you get, can you get between them directly with a bridge? Um, so what, so, OK, so that's cool. So, <laughs> that's a bit of 1800s uh, history for you. Uh, but what do we actually use? So what are people, what's the point of this thing uh, nowadays? So uh, forward 300 years or so. Um, so it's typically complex data. So if you've got um, data which, you wouldn't, which is not complex, it's probably not very interesting to actually put it in a graph. So if all you've got is just some data points and there's no link between them at all, as to say you've got like a load of key values, and you're like, well, actually, I don't care what the relationship of them is to each other, it's probably not a very interesting graph. Um, so one way of, of trying to figure out, do I have some data that looks like it might be interesting for a graph, is to look along, uh, well, these are three axes of what, what could you... Uh, uh, define complexity as meaning. Um, so uh, this is quite a nice way of looking at it to, to figure out. So one is size, uh, another one is the structure of the data, and then another one is how connected it is. So size, I guess, is the most obvious, i.e. There's, there's just loads of data. Uh, and a lot of the, no, the, the NoSQL uh, solutions that uh, aggregate the data are, fo are focused on here. Uh, so this is, I guess this could be uh, also the Hadoop sort of world. So this is not really, Neo is not aiming at, or graph databases are not aiming at purely solving the, the size problem. Uh, they're more focused on the latter two uh, of, the, of these three parameters. Uh, so variable structure, uh, so I guess if you've, if you've worked with a relational database, this will be ho hopefully reasonably familiar. You start off with your beautiful schema. Uh, and you're like, OK, Google, this is my table, this is my fields, and everyone's definitely going to have uh, all of these fields. Uh, and then you start using it, and then all the gaps start appearing. And it's like, oh, null, null, null for the whole column, null everywhere. Uh, so here's like a simple example. Say we had a person's table, and we're like, we, we create it. And we're like, yeah, I got it. Cool. Definitely user ID, first name, emails, some social media. And then we start off, and then Mark ruins it straight away. No Facebook account. And then we get this well-known A and other. No Twitter and Skype. And already, so now all your uh, SQL ends up having to handle all these null cases all over the place. Uh, so that's not so fun. So that's one, that's one of the, the ways that a graph kind of takes that, a little bit of that problem away, which we'll have a look at. Uh, but the main one is actually connecting uh, the data. Um, so what does it mean for, uh, for data to be connected? Well, I guess the most obvious one, thanks to the, uh, uh, the social network film, is the social network. Uh, so this is, this is probably the initial use case that people were using graph for, which was, I want to work out some friend recommendations to people. Uh, and actually, the mo it probably actually leads to the most amusing uh, use of uh, Neo4j that I've seen, which is, uh, which is a lot of the dating websites actually use it. 
uh, to come up with their suggested uh, who should you date uh, by taking into account who's in, your, uh, who's in your Facebook network, what hobbies do you have, uh, and so on. Uh, which leads to the amusing case where our CEO actually has an interview of him in onlinedating.com. Uh, which you can't imagine if you found it a, a tech uh, product, you'd, you'd think you're going to end up on there. Um, but there's other things. So that's, that's the most obvious one. But you can also do things like uh, sort of actual real network impact analysis. So, hey, I've got, I've, got, I've got an actual physical network. Something went wrong over here. What is that connected to? Uh, and can, I, can I figure out where the problem might have started from? Uh, especially one of the ISPs in the UK does this. Uh, obviously, b being in London, you all are very... Uh, Skilled uh, tube map traversers, I imagine. Um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you quite a funny story about some people who are not. Um, so our, the office where I work in is down in Southwark, kind of down here. So actually, already now that I've told you Southwark, you've probably worked out the optimal journey from here. Um, so some of our some of our colleagues come in and they get up here at Paddington. So they go Heathrow Paddington, and then they've got to figure out how to get to Southwark. Uh, the current record for the worst attempt uh, is two hours. <laughs> Um, which was an absolute nightmare. It went uh, clockwise on the circle, all the way around here, then got down to Monument, didn't realize, I think didn't realize there was a Northern Line, <laughs> got off at Monument, walked across the bridge to London Bridge, which is e equidistant from Southwark, uh, and then got, then got the, uh, the Jubilee Line across. Uh, of course, if you're a master or, or, or really good at traversing the, uh, the tube graph, obviously you'd be Paddington, you'd be across on the Bakerloo to Baker Street, and you'd be down on the Jubilee, and it's 20 minutes. Um, but, and so effectively, this is what a graph thing. So you can do that really quickly in your head because you're really good at uh, London tube map traversal. And effectively, that's what a graph is doing, just it can do loads of those. Uh, if you imagine on that diagram we had before, the nodes could be your stations, uh, and they're connected by the relationships being different lines, say, in a very simple, simplified model. Uh, and so what a graph can do is, is analyze loads of those connections really, really quickly. Um, so whereas I guess for, for, that, for that particular journey, you only have to be able to analyze, oh, yeah, don't go on the circle line. Um, and so you could, you could make it take into account that. You could get it to take into account, oh, the circle line's closed. Oh, the Victoria line's closed. Can you find me the best route? Uh, so route finding is quite a common one. Uh, you can do some sort of recommendations. So like the, uh, you bought this. Someone else who also bought this bought that. Uh, and you, obviously, you can make a more uh, sophisticated version of that, but that would be, that would be your, your starting point. Uh, logistics is obviously quite a common one. So it's like, hey, can I work out which way this parcel needs to be routed? So it's quite similar to the, to the, to the routing stuff. Uh, a very common one is actually also modeling access control, because like, they often have very complicated hierarchies of groups that people belong in. Uh, and you've got to work out, are they allowed to execute this trade? Are they allowed to view this particular page on a website or, or, or something similar to that? Um, we've had a lot of people doing fraud analysis. So actually, um, there was someone from the ICIJ who was trying to work, who, who put, um, there was a load of data, that the, the HSBC data, where they were working out, oh, HSBC seemed to be uh, very dodgy. Uh, so that was from, that, they, they were able to figure that out from actually putting the data into NIFJ to, to start with. Uh, and then this diagram, uh, as I understand it, <laughs> is kind of pointing out who was at the heart of the 2008 global financial crisis which, as you can kind of see, suggests it was all Merrill Lynch's fault. Um, not sure whether that's true, but this is what the, this is what the analysis suggested. Uh, OK, so those are, those are, those are a few uh, sort of examples. Hopefully, amongst those, maybe you see something, and you're like, oh, OK, that kind of seems like the type of stuff I do. Uh, so NIA is a graph database. So yeah, I guess this is a, this is a little bit different, given this is a, this, you, 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 uh, your big .NET uh, fans, uh, I imagine. Um, so it's a, it's, the, the product is, is, a, is a JVM uh, product, but you can call it from, uh, from any of the other languages. So there's drivers uh, across all of them. Uh, and there's, there's a .NET driver, obviously, <laughs> given that a lot, a lot of people doing, um, doing stuff with this uh, use .NET. Uh, but it happens to be Java. Um, it works. Uh, so it's an acid transaction, also quite similar to how the relational databases work. Uh, so you have a transaction. You can do a load of stuff. Uh, and it's either committed or it's not. Uh, you can cluster it. Um, it could, we've got people. Put, we've got some, we've got one uh, user who has the whole of the, uh, all of the Facebook users uh, in the graph. This is before they closed their, they tied their API down. So they they were able to go and get the friends of friends of all their users. Which basically, if you follow the the, Ke the Kevin Bacon degree of six, that basically gets you the whole of uh, 
anyone who's ever signed up for Facebook. So they've got all of those people in. They're not all users, they're, but they're all there like as, as, as nodes in the graph. And then and they connect only the ones who are actually their users. And so they've, they're in, the, well, that's, I think that's 1.6 billion, um, 1.6 billion people, 1.6 billion nodes. And then they've got, uh, I think, 15 billion relationships connecting them. So it's not massive, massive data, but it's, uh, it's not, not small either. Uh, and most people nowadays are running it, I guess, like you do most databases. So you run it as a server uh, and you connect to it via driver. Um, if you like Java a lot, then you could, you could choose to embed it, yeah, or Java, Scala, any JVM language. Some, some people don't like the idea of having to call over a network to a, uh, to a database server, so they, they run it uh, embedded. Uh, OK, so why would I use it? So if we, we kind of loop back, so if you're looking at a relational database, how would you figure out what type of queries are interesting um, for a graph database? So they'd be ones where, so this is kind of repeating a bit, so we're densely connected, so i.e. it's fitting one of those things where the relationships are the interesting thing, um, and it potentially variably structured. Um, so that it, it, what that means is that uh, just because uh, you, and, you and I are both uh, people records, that doesn't mean we have to have exactly the same field. So perhaps I have a nickname, and I put my nickname in uh, as a property on my node, but you don't have one, so that's fine. You don't have to have one. So we, at the moment, uh, the database, is quite, it kind of lets you it doesn't really force a schema on you. There's a little bit of schema, but at the moment, it's, it's relatively, you kind of have a lot of freedom to do whatever you want with it. Uh, so those are the first two. And then pathfinding is kind of the, I guess that's kind of the tube uh, type query. So it's like, hey, I'm at Heathrow Terminal 5. I want to get to uh, Upminster. What do I do? And it's kind of like, hey, here's two records. Can you find me a route between them? And, the, and you can... Uh, execute shortest path type queries as well across that sort of data. Uh, and then deep joins is the idea of often, often a deep join is where you're kind of connecting to your, like doing a self join. So you, uh, like the, the friends example. So I want to find the friends of friends of friends. And it's like, okay, well, I've got to connect the friends table to the friends table to the friends table to the friends table in a, in a relational database. Um, you can also do variably, variable depth type queries to so say I've got my product, imagine you're modeling the Amazon product catalog. So I've got all my top level categories. I'm like, oh, OK, well, can you show me all the products that start under mobile phones? And, yeah, and you can like, drill down as far as, as far as you want and capture all the products that are hanging off all the different levels. So kind of like a tree, tree sort of traversal. So you can do that sort of stuff as well. Uh, and the idea is that although a lot of people do actually use this for, for just analyzing data. So it's quite fun uh, for doing that. So we'll get onto the query language in a second. Um, but uh, typically, where people get the most benefit is, is where they're hooking up with a website and they want to get a, a response very quickly. Uh, if you don't really, if you're if you're doing a batch computation and you don't really care how quickly it comes back, it's it's probably not really optimized for that, like some other tools are. Uh, so let's have a look. So, all right, so there's a lot of preamble for you. Uh, let's have a look. What does a graph actually look like? So. This is a, obviously quite a simple uh, model. Uh, it's just to show you the, the concepts. Um, so what we're modeling here is uh, an imaginary graph. Uh, and you can see we've got some, some authors. Uh, and they wrote some books. So for example, Graham Greene wrote Our Man in Havana. Um, so you notice that, so, uh, so that's fine. So he wrote, he wrote that book. Um, and then, so he has, a, he has a rote relationship with the book. Uh, but Ian, who's also a person, remember, so there's two, two people who, are, who have the same type. Um, but Ian actually purchased it. So there's a different relationship there. So we've got two, two, diff, two, two nodes, uh, different types, uh, but they, they can have different, and they can have, uh, same type, sorry, two nodes, same type, different relationships with the data. And obviously, these mean completely different things, because there's going to be only, there, there'll be probably one or maybe, maybe a handful of people who wrote a book. But lots of people might have purchased it. Uh, and you can see Ian's able to purchase that book, and then he also could purchase that book, uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Uh, and Alan might also choose to purchase that book. Um, so these are the nodes. So we've got the nodes, we've got relationships, uh, we've got properties. So these are like the fields of the relational database. Uh, and these are labels here. So we're going to, uh, we'll do each, and, uh, each of them in turn. So nodes and relationships you already know from earlier. Uh, properties and labels are the new two. Uh, so nodes are these. So these are your bits of data. So anyth anywhere where you like, it's a, it's a record in a database. That's probably a node. Um, so that could be, uh, it could be a car. Uh, it could be uh, a football player. It could be a project. It could be, uh, if you're doing tube graph, it could be a tube station. Uh, if you were modeling all the databases, it could be a database. Um, 
if you uh, if you were working with content, it could be like the tags uh, that, that make the content. So, so we could have the the actual blog article or article in a in a blog or in a newspaper. That could be a node, and then the way that could be connected to another one might be via oh they both uh, have the Neo4j tag or they both have the uh, Umbrico tag, or they both have the unit testing tag, or whatever it is uh, that, that, that allows you to say, hey, these two bits of data have some sort of link between each other. Uh, I don't know what's happened to that one. <laughs> it's, it's a bit, a bit too uh, light gray. I don't know whether you can see it. So here are nodes, if they were there. Um, actually, maybe it's even better. But, so these are the relationships, the only thing that you can see. Um, so they, they, they're going between the nodes, and they basically explain well, what what is the link between those two nodes? Why is it interesting that there's something between them? Uh, and this is actually, as, as I mentioned before, this is the, like the pre-computed join. So this one saying, uh, this node wrote this one. This one saying, I purchased the book. This one's purchased, purchased, the, uh, and that one's wrote as well. And so the idea is that the way Neo4j models this data is that you can very quickly uh, distinguish between those types of relationships. Uh, so if I, if I start uh, on, I'm trying to think of somebody who's got two is there anyone who's got two different types of relationships? Um, let's, say, let's say we had, uh, let's say Graham Green purchased something else, and we were doing a query from Graham, Graham Green, so we were like, can we find all the books Graham Green uh, wrote? Um, when you do that query, it can just completely ignore any of the other relationship types other than wrote. It doesn't even have to look at them at all. So there's no need to scan like, through them. It's just like, okay, you, you're interested in wrote. Cool, I'll go straight there. So that's the intention of the relationship types, is they're ruling out a whole load of um, area that you don't need to bother searching. Uh, you can put more than one relationship on things. Um, these, are these, are, these are just some common questions people, people often ask. I don't know whether you have them, uh, but you can have multiple friends. It'd be a pretty sad graph otherwise. Um, <laughs> you can connect people in, in different ways. So you could be a friend uh, and a colleague. Um, you'll notice with some of these, it's actually interesting because you're, because, um, the relationship is kind of bi-directional in some way. So if you're friends with that person, that doesn't necessarily mean they're friends back. Um, and so in that case, maybe we choose to model it as, oh, okay, we'll have a friend this way and a friend this way. And maybe we even say, I mean, if we were being really harsh, we might put a score for the friendship <laughs> as to what you perceive. Well, we're at eight friends. I actually only think it's a three. Um, but some uh, relationships, uh, actually, they're probably bi-directional. If I'm colleagues with you, then almost by definition, you have to be colleagues with me. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty odd. Uh, and in those cases, so all the relationships are stored direction in a directional way, uh, but you can choose to ignore the direction uh, when you query it. And it'll, the, the speed is, is equal uh, for incoming as for outgoing relationships, as the way it's modeled. Uh, you can also create a relationship to, your, uh, to yourself if you want. Uh, labels are these. Um, so these are, I guess, reasonably similar to the to the tables uh, in, in a relational database, but not quite, uh, because a record can go, or a node can go in, mul can have multiple labels. Uh, it can also have no labels if you don't want. Uh, and the intention of these uh, is, that, is they're kind of based on the idea of the Gmail labels. So it's like, hey, I want to be able to, in Gmail's case, I want to be able to very quickly go and find some emails that I've tagged earlier. Here it's, I want to very, very quickly go and find some nodes in my graph. Um, so that it's kind of a similar sort of use case. Um, and you can put indexes on labeled nodes, and you can put uh, constraints. For example, you can say um, any nodes that are of type or have labeled person uh, have to have a first name. So the, the first name can't be, can't be missing, for example. Uh, so if we go back to where we were before, uh, now this probably, you know, you know all the terminology required to read this. So we've got uh, nodes, uh, John le Carre, Graham Greene, Alan. Uh, he wrote Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Alan purchased it. Uh, and there's a bit of metadata, uh, and you can kind of see there's some metadata here, here, and here. So, so there's a graph. Uh, okay, so how do we query that graph? So that, that's fine. Uh, we've, got, we've, got a, uh, we've got our model defined. What are we, how are we going to query it? Um, so we've got a, a query language called Cypher. So that's actually now an, an open standard. So there's a few other uh, people who are going to implement it as well. Uh, and it's... It's based on SQL, but it's trying to take like, the, 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 the declarative nature of, SQL, of SQL's uh, syntax and work out, well, how do you apply that to querying a graph? Uh, and the way that it does it is by trying to make a, a one-dimensional ver uh, or uh, a text version of a diagram uh, from a whiteboard. So imagine you're drawing out the model with your colleagues or the, or the subject matter expert, and then you're like, OK, cool, how do we write a query? The intention is take that diagram 
uh, and it goes straight down to something. Uh, so let's have a look. Uh, so imagine we start off with, a really, with our two nodes, one relationship. So this is, this is just to introduce you to the syntax. Uh, so let's say it's uh, Mark, friends with Tom. So Mark's there, Tom's there. Uh, that's how you represent that in ASCII art. Uh, so uh, that's the circle. So imagine, if you get the right font, you can get it into a circle. One of my colleagues really wants to put this as the UTF-8 circle character, but then like, no one's going to ever know how to type it. Uh, so not at the moment. Um, so at the moment, a parentheses and then two dashes for represent the arrow. Uh, and then if you want to write a query, your very first query, uh, this could be it. Uh, and all we're doing here is we're saying match. The so match is, um, is, the, is the main keyword. So you're saying, you, you say, hey, I want to query something. OK, cool. What is it? What do you want me to find? Uh, I want you to find me uh, a node. Cool. So go and find me some, a node uh, that has a relationship uh, to another one. Uh, so anyone who's got an outgoing relationship to someone else, uh, and return them. That's it. Uh, this is like the select star from star uh, and find any, any joins that exist. Uh, so you probably wouldn't do this on a production database, uh, but on a toy one, it's okay. Uh, so what happens if we, so, okay, so that's the simplest thing. What happens if we actually want to capture the relationship that sits in between the nodes? So at the moment, we only, we're totally ignoring the relationship. We're just saying there is one, but we don't know what it is. Um, so if we want to capture it, we can put some square brackets and um, put an R. By the way, these are just variable names. Um, so they, I, I'm calling it A and R. Obviously, you name it something a bit better than that. It's just to make it fit on the slide. Um, so these are just these, these don't have any impact. Uh, so here we're saying, so if we translate that into a query, find me any node that has a relationship to another one. Uh, and if you do this, this means I don't care what's on the other side. I just want there to be something. Uh, and then return me the node and return me what is the type uh, or the string, uh, the, the name of the relationship. Uh, so if we keep on going like that, uh, we're going we're to do this on a, on a data set in a sec. Um, let's say we move on to a movies type data set. Say we steal something from IMDb. Uh, I want to find any node that has an acted in relationship to another one uh, and then return me. And this time, actually, I don't want the node. I just want one of the properties. So in this case, I only want the actor name uh, and the movie that they acted in. Um, you can also then go further and say, actually, I want to restrict one side, so I only want to find Tom Hanks's movie. So now we, now we can actually restrict it by saying, oh, there's a person label here. Um, and I want to go and find, hey, from Tom Hanks, find me uh, all the movies he acted in. OK, so now I'm going to go, uh, I might have to. Actually, I'm good, I'm good at talking loud. They were telling me before, you need to make sure you don't, you're, you're really near the mic. But I'm quite far away from the mic already. Uh, so I think we'll probably be all right. Um, so what we're going to do, so this is a tool called Arrows, which lets you draw uh, diagrams uh, it, or draw, draw graphs. Uh, so this is the data set. So we've taken IMDB data set, scraped it, uh, and come up with a, with a graph to do some uh, queries on that. Uh, and so what we've got, this is, the, this is the main bit. So we've got some movies and a little bit of the metadata of the movies. Uh, and we've, got, we've pulled in the producers, the actors, and the directors. And I think we've made like a fake social... Um, got like a fake uh, social network on top of it as well. Is it all right if I sit down? Is that going to be all right? Is he still going to be able to see me? All right, let's have a look. So, uh, what have I done? There we go. Uh, I'm just going gonna, just gonna to change this so I can actually see it as well. Otherwise, it would be a bit hard. Right. All right, we're the same now. OK, so at the, um, okay, so first step one, I'm just going to start this thing up. Um, so, for, so if you're working on Windows, uh, actually, there, there is actually an installer. Uh, so like you get like a GUI that you can install it with. Um, but I, uh, I wanted to put it in this directory. I don't know why it's not starting, actually. Hang on, let's, let's just try and... I'll just kill everything that's running. I think I might have another version running somewhere else. Let's just kill that off. In theory, this doesn't start. I'm just going to have to nuke everything. OK, so that's not started yet. So what I'm going to do, I am going to kill all the things. 
のは読みますね。というか、そのですね。はい、お題。All right, now is there anything running? No, okay, let's try again. Slightly quicker than this. Let me see if I can figure out what's going on. Oh. Mm, looks fine. Oh. What is it doing? Hmm. Sorry about this. I don't know what, I'm not entirely sure what I've done wrong. Let's try to stop it. Now we're trying to start it. Otherwise, this is going to be very boring. Uh, oh, if this doesn't work, I, <laughs> I guess I will have to continue talking. I should have just left it running, to be honest. I had it running just before I came here, and I thought it would be cool to show them me starting it. Normally, Normally it's like beautiful. Today, not so much. I'm not sure whether it's trying to connect to a network or something weird. I don't know why I would do that. But. Uh, anyway, so this is a bit of a fail. But anyway, so the idea is uh, we'll see if that comes to work uh, is that we've got, so we've basically got this movie graph. Um, and I was trying to think if I can, if I can show you anything with it. Um, so we can load in these movies, and we basically, we've just taken a subset of the IMDb graph. Uh, and what you can do, um, is you can kind of do, like, the, the sort of queries that you can do on, I mean, the data set size is not very big, so it's, it's not incredibly interesting, but the stuff that you can do on it uh, is things like, uh, let's say I want to work out the Kevin Bacon number of the people who are in the, uh, who are in the IMDB data set. So uh, say I want to start, for, uh, say I want to get all the people, for example, I want to know how, how, many, uh, how many hops would it take me to get between the people. Um, so I want to go uh, from, say, or let, or let's, let's take two people to start with. Uh, so I want to get, let's say here is somebody else, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, let's say Charlie, Thur Charlie Theron and Tom Hanks, and we take those two people, and we're like, how, how, how would I be able to work out if they knew each other? Uh, so how would you actually do that? Uh, and so what you might have, it might be easier if I, if I sketch this out. Oh, no, actually, now we're ready. Apparently, I don't know why that took so long. Uh, this will make it a bit easier for me. <laughs> that was going to be some good miming. I've been saved. Uh, okay, so if you download Neo4j, uh, it should start a little bit quicker than that. Um, and we've basically got this data set here. Uh, and this is, I mean, we, I guess you can kind of see some of it. Uh, but we're basically creating the matrix, uh, some other films. Uh, we're creating the people who acted in them. And, uh, and so on, kind of all the way down. Uh, and what you can do is you can run that, and what we get back, uh, this is a visualization of, um, of what is actually being stored in the database. I think these colors are not very good contrast. Let's see what's a better one. Red? Oh, red is good. Uh, green? No. No. <laughs> Well, I don't know what that. No, that's not good. That's when everything's red. Purple. Which one do you reckon? Purple. Purple might be the best. Uh, okay, so you can, uh, as you can see, so this is describe. This is like a visualization. Uh, so it's a D3 visualization here of what was on the slide. So we've got, uh, and you can kind of see it's just describing what the data set is. So we've got Penny Marshall directed League of Their Own. Tom Hanks acted in it. Tom Hanks also acted in. I think that that thing you do. Uh, and what you can do on here, this is kind of a, an exploratory tool for the database. Um, so you can click, if you click on the nodes, uh, it opens up anything that's not already on the screen for them. Uh, so it's quite a nice like, tool for just going around and seeing, oh, what is actually in this thing? Um, and it also comes with, um, so if we go back uh, to, so on this, so you get um, on this menu here, 
Uh, so I, I kind of just, I shortcut it a, a little bit, but this is quite a nice place to start uh, if you download it. Uh, so we've got that, so we've done that already. Uh, and then it runs you through uh, a load of queries that you can give it, give it a try. So for example, uh, we could find Tom Hanks. There's Tom Hanks. Um, we could go and find 10 people just to get their names. Um, so this is the, this is, so you've got, you've got a, lot of, a load of them sort of pre-loaded uh, pre for you there. And then this is the one we had on the slide. So find Tom Hanks' movies and you get back, uh, you, in this case, you get back a visualization. In actual fact, in the background, uh, this is what's happening. Uh, so it's making a post request. Uh, this, is the this is what it's sending. I don't know how well you can see this. This is just showing the query that we sent. Uh, and this is what you actually get back. So you get back some JSON, sh um, uh, some JSON with all those movies. There's quite a few of them. Um, so this is what would happen if you actually call. So all we've got, we've just got a JavaScript driver in the browser calling the, the server on the back end. Um, obviously, if you don't use JavaScript, this would be calling it from the dot, .NET driver uh, rather than the JavaScript one. And so we can do. So right. So here's, our, here's the query that we talked about before. Um, so this is find. Oh, now we get. So this is the, uh, I want to find uh, the path, the shortest path from Kevin Bacon to Meg Ryan. So what's the fastest way that I can find the relationship between those two people in the graph? Um, and you see it was, it was pretty quick, even though I had no idea uh, who those two people were. Uh, so we're going, Kevin Bacon acted in Apollo 13, Tom Hanks acted in Apollo 13, Tom Hanks acted in Joe versus the Volcano, Meg Ryan acted in that as well. Um, which I think, let's pick another person. Uh, I don't know whether Tom Cruise is in here. Tom Cruise, ah, oh, too easy. Tom Cruise is already there. Um, we need a person. Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Do they work together? No, no, no. Let's see. Yeah, so Keanu Reeves is at two. Uh, so what we could actually do is see who's got the... So if we take off the bacon bit, uh, take off the mirror bit, and then you can actually say uh, P... Or by length P descending. Let's see how well this is. That's a bit harder. Let's see how it gets on. I'm not sure whether that was wise. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, I think most of that might have been taken through the visualization. Um, hang on a sec. So, what, I'll, I'll just get back to the names of the, the nodes that are in there. Uh, and we'll do the length of that. Oh, we might. That's not going to work. Um, I don't think it's going to let me do that because I haven't got the P. So you can only, uh, what is it? I think I need to get rid of the graph. But uh, so, so actually, even, even in this small data set, the furthest distance anyone has is, I think it's five people. Uh, so there's 10. So the length is 10 because there's um, person, movie, person, movie. So if you go, so you go River Phoenix to, hang on a second, I'm going to, this, the browser is not happy with me for, for that previous one. Let's just put a limit on it so we only get back a few. There we go. So this is, if we put that full screen, this is the connection between, actually, hang on, hang on. It'll be even better if we just do one because then you'll be able to see what is it doing. So we're trying to get from, we're trying to find the longest path between any two people in the whole thing. Um, and so it actually, River Phoenix to Richard Harris is the furthest that you can go. And it doesn't have any idea who these people, these nodes are. It's just like, hey, I'll try and find the shortest path. And so it's executing a shortest path query to figure that out. So it's like, okay, River Phoenix up to Stand By Me, up to uh, Rob Reiner, he directed When Halle Met Sally, and Nora Ephraim produced that, and she directed You've Got Mail, Tom Hanks acted in that, he acted in that, Cloud Atlas. And then eventually, like, you, you end up with this other side. So these. This is quite, I guess this query is quite hard uh, to do in a relational database because you don't really know, well, how many times do I need to join the tables together? Like, I mean, I, we don't actually have, actually have any idea, so we just said, uh, we actually just said uh, star, which means go as many as you need. Uh, now, obviously, you've kind of probably figured out if they're not connected at all, this will take quite a long time because it's going to keep on analyzing uh, every possible route that it can find, but if they are connected, then it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, I mean that's just that's sort of a sort of a sample for you. That's like a, that's a data set that it comes with. We've also got another one where uh, we've, we've actually got the north wind. 
uh, data set in there, so you can play with that if you want. Uh, and, so you, and obviously, with the Northman one, you probably know how to do it in SQL already, so you can compare it, uh, compare the queries against each other and see whether or not uh, this actually is, is helping. Uh, but quickly, to, to wrap up, so uh, the way people use this, uh, so, so it, is written in, it is written in Java and Scala, uh, but you can hook up to it. it. All you need is a client that can talk REST, and uh, in the, so we're at version 2.3, uh, the next version 3.0 uh, in the spring of next year, uh, and in that one, we're actually building like a custom protocol, and then we'll, we'll have uh, drivers for each of the languages that can communicate with that. Um, as I say, drivers for all the languages. This is, the, this is what the .NET one is called. So this is what you'd need to look for. So it's on uh, Nougat. No, is it Nougat? I'm going to go Nougat. I don't know. It's a French Nougat. Can't be. Nougat. Uh, so we've got a Neo4j uh, we've got a client on there. Uh, it's, um, it comes packaged for the command line stuff that I was doing. Um, it works, I've now forgotten what the name of the stuff, PowerShell. It works, it works with, with PowerShell stuff. Um, uh, and if you don't like using the command line, it comes with like a, with a GUI uh, as well. So there is a GUI on the Mac, but um, I wanted to have this <laughs> to, uh, to, to uh, I have lots of different databases running on my machine, so I wanted to have uh, in different folders. Um, but you can do that. Uh, we have some people running it in, um, in production on websites. Uh, there's a HA, uh, high availability stuff in the enterprise version. So there's two versions, so there's a community version. Uh, enterprise version. Um, and then, uh, so as you've seen, so we've got uh, libraries which have lots of graph algorithms in them. Um, so shortest path you can call from the query language. Uh, short, the, some of the others are not there at the moment. Um, uh, so, but you can write, if you're comfortable writing in a JVM language, then you can write stuff in there. Uh, so for example, I wrote, uh, I went to TFL's office about 18 months ago. And one of my colleagues said, oh, you should take Journey Planner and write the back end of Journey Planner using Neo to do the, hey, how do I get from these two places? Uh, so we wrote uh, an A-star search, which took into account um, uh, the, distant, the amount of time it takes to go between the stations. Uh, and then we did some imaginary scenarios like, what happens if the northern line was down for the day? What would you do then? Uh, and, it, and, got, and got it to do those sort of queries. Um, if this has been reasonably interesting, there's... Um, we do meetups in, uh, in Skills Matter once a month, and we do some in, in Southwark uh, every other well, every week. We kind of just cycle through through different ones. Uh, we've got online training. Uh, there's loads of do example data sets, probably better than the movie one, or more, more stuff than the movie one. Uh, the Stack Overflow is, I guess, the common place where people go. We've got a guy who, who lives in Germany and somehow manages to reply to things within about a couple of minutes of you posting. We reckon he might be like duplicated. Uh, not entirely sure how he manages it, but it's good to test him. You're like, huh, 3 a.m. Nope, still there. Uh, can, it can out-unsleep uh, out you as well. Uh, and then obviously you've got Google Groups, and uh, there's a, this book, uh, Graph Database, you can, you can grab it for free, and it's uh, quite a nice introduction uh, to follow on from this. Uh, and one more to close up. Um, this is kind of the, le this is the weird sort of learning curve of uh, working with graphs. Uh, so when you start, you're like, okay, let's see the introduction talk. You're like, oh, that didn't seem too bad. Then you start doing it, and you're like, where's my tables? I need my tables. I want to make my schema uh, and all that. And you're like, oh, this is horrible. Uh, and then either you give up <laughs> or you keep going, and you're like, oh, actually, this is quite nice. Uh, and then you end up like me, and then you talk about it. <laughs> hey. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll say, I guess I can send the slides to Tom, and if, if, if you want them, you can grab them from him. Uh, otherwise, thank you for... <laughs> We're coming to watch. <laughs>